folks, Sean here, another room shot to Sean. I have, you know what? We worked on this last week. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We've had both these gentlemen on barstools before. We have Mr. Barry Connors, Mr. Daryl Miller, all the way from Toronto via Zoom. Thank you, gentlemen. Happy to be Hi. here. Hi, Barry. Hey, Daryl. It's been a while. It has been a while, mate. So I, I do want to start, uh, Barry, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I don't expect to remember this, but we did the interview with you a year and a half ago, and you said the funniest thing. You talked about all the bands that you've seen do uh, your songs on YouTube, and you wait for the drummers to cack. And I'm in a band with a female singer, and we're doing a couple of your tunes now. And every time I do them, I get that ringing in my ears, hoping there's no phone video, and you're really bored watching YouTube, seeing me blow blow donuts on one of your songs. Okay, well, listen, uh, let, let, let me quash that. I've seen your drumming, Sean. You're not only a great friend, a great person, but you're a great drummer. So uh, everybody else in the band sucks, but you're great. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. Um, so how you? So we? I started this segment kind of. Um, some, some people said, "Look, you talk to your drummer friends about what's going on with the pandemic. You know, down here in Halifax, you can be a single guy with an acoustic guitar. Um, for whatever reason, that flies. There's no full bands right now." Start with you, Barry. What have you been doing to keep yourself, I guess, uh, occupied during all this crap? Well, this is pretty shit. Um, I'm going to tell you. I've got three drum kits in my studio downstairs. Uh, it's lots of fun, and this opens me up to saying, Daryl, one day you got to drive down. I mean, I'm an hour away, and we'll have a, a barbecue, and we'll have a little drum off, and you can play my new drums. I'm the Canadian ambassador for Bill Ludwig's new drum company. I saw but that. I'll go back to, uh, I got COVID. I got COVID on January 1st and it kicked the shit out of me for 14 days. Uh, you know, I don't want to get an opinion or, or an argument, but I got doubly vaxxed and I think it saved my life. As soon as I felt better, I got my uh, booster. So I've had three shots. I'll probably stop now, but I'm better and I'm back to uh, health. So that's been my year. I just opened a beer in your honor. Cheers awesome. to you that you're yeah, alive. Yeah. Cheers uh, was to you. Listen, my friend, I, I got COVID in May. I didn't have any any uh, symptoms. Uh, double vax, got my booster three weeks ago. Um, you know, no side effects again, so uh, that's pretty good. Daryl, I've uh, been seeing some pictures of some of your stuff. We had you on the show about a month ago, and you keep talking about the ice tomb in your condo. <laughs> yeah, well, come on. You guys must admit, we're, we're going to get hit with another snowstorm here, that, like tonight or tomorrow, another 30 centimeters. We've had an insane winter, like super cold for Toronto. We never get like this. It's rare. And my lanai that I built during COVID, it's almost like you're going into a bomb shelter these days trying to survive this, right? But uh, we have a nice balcony, we turned it into like a lanai and turned it into winterized it basically but i have this fireplace out there that's the main source of heat but it's not a real fireplace it's electric but that that heats it up to around 18 degrees i open a window off the kitchen and it kind of circulates the air out there and and i can sit up there and, and drum and watch tv it's all done and up it's nice it's like a man cave kind of thing wow and, that's very uh, cool it's very cool. And it got me through, man. It got me through. I hadn't played drums in eight months. I was dying. And I said, I need to, to this is going to take drastic measures. I'm going to lose my chops and I'm going to retire. It's going to happen. If I don't keep playing, I'm fucked. You're not going to lose your chops. You're far too good, brother. That's well, all and, and, you, Barry, know I mean? you know how it feels, though, when you get far away, far away. So I, you, I, I get to drum every day. And uh, yeah. some days I go downstairs and in three minutes I suck and I stop and come upstairs. I go down other days and I do 25 minutes and I'm the best drummer in the world. So it <laughs> evens out. <laughs> but, but you know what I, I'm just saying, you guys, both drummers, you guys know that a drummer cannot get too far away from drum shape or it's yeah. scary. It's like, what the fuck? Like it's so anyway, I was on the cusp. I hadn't drummed in months and months and during wow. COVID. Yeah, okay. months, man. Months. I, I, I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't, and you can't play drums in, in an apartment setup, condo setup. You can't play drums, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. so I customized this kit with uh, Sabian cymbals, the quiet tone cymbals, and I used the Evan sound off I head. saw those. Yeah, I tried them. Yeah, I, I, I just basically customized it into a quiet kit. And I have a giant condo build in front of me. That makes a hell of a lot of noise in the daytime. And that was my end. I drum an hour a day out there 
Ray hey, the made... construction's happening. I'm going to drum. Yeah, they're starting to, those bastards are starting to film me now. They're up at our level. <laughs> well, <laughs> so they're filming me playing. They see me out there and they're taking shots of me because they're, they're right across the street, man. Right out my window, right across the street. I was uh, I was saying people to people the last couple, well, two years that we've been doing this, at the, especially the first time, um, where there was nothing else to do. If you weren't spending the time, and obviously, Daryl, for you, it was a little tougher. Barry, you're, I, you know, I've seen videos that Barry's you posted. at his house. So yeah, and, and, and that kit sounds amazing. Um, I, you know, I use the electric drums uh, for practice, but um, I kept saying to people, you know, if you weren't putting the time in when things open back up, you were probably going to be in trouble. And lo and behold, went out and saw a few bands and you could tell their players just kind of sat on their butts and didn't do a whole heck of a lot. They just, they struggle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I don't, need... I don't practice. I just go play. I'm yep. never getting any better. I've resulted <laughs> to that. You know, I'm as good as I was uh, long ago and that's uh, my profess. Uh, that's it. I'm not yeah. going down to practice and learn new stuff. I mean, I'm too old. <laughs> But to thank goodness, uh, I have some fans. God, stop swearing. You're not too old. Yeah, yeah. Those words. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it, you yeah. know, it's it's funny, though. Um, uh, so the, I, I have a band that uh, we put together kind of during the COVID thing. It was an offshoot of Barstools. And uh, the first gig we played was February 27th. A friend of mine comes up and says, there's nine drummers in the audience. Are you nervous? And I was just like, I got their 10 bucks. They can leave anytime they want. I really don't care. Right. Um, I, I, but I do find that when I did that show, I did the work. I was pretty confident when I went in that, uh, hey, you know what? You might not like my drum kit or my hair or the fan blowing, but hey, I'm not going to blow chunks, right? So uh, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to do that. So, Daryl, you, uh, you know, you get, you've, you've had the book coming out, you get another book coming out. Now you're back practicing. Uh, I've talked to you quite a bit. And obviously, um, you know, with this shutdown and stuff, they're getting, they're talking about opening things back up here fairly quickly. Um, what, what do you hear yeah, today? It was today, a today? Today, all the restaurants opened up again. Okay. For 50% capacity or whatever. I mean, I don't want to get too into the whole COVID thing. I'm just so sick of it. I'm triple vax too, by the way. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I've done everything. I've complied. I, I wear my mask. I've done everything they want us to do. And I'm just done with this. I'm just sick of it. I'm going to fly exactly, out next man. Exactly. I'm flying out next week to play the Monsters of Rock Cruise. And that's going to be a big test. Wow, it's I mean, still on, eh? Yeah, it is, man. It's not canceling. We're flying well, into you're gonna Miami. To, you're going to have to wear your mask every minute on that ship. Yeah, I know, man. Those things are like a Petri dish to begin exactly, with. Exactly, yeah. So I, I don't know how this is going to go, but we are doing it. And I'm just, my fingers are crossed that we're going to have good shows and have a good time. Uh, regardless, everybody's starving to just try to live their life right now. Fuck yeah, I know. So you've got, uh, obviously, Russell and you've got Jerry. Yeah. And who's playing bass? Uh, John, Johnny uh, is from my band, Auto Man. I have that other band that I'm the lead singer. I know. In. I know that. I brought, from I, yeah, I brought him to to the Dwarves in 213. Okay. We started up again in 213, and we offered the gig to Ron Bo, who's the original bass player, uh, you know, and he's he has a set life in Buffalo, New York. He runs a business, and he's he's just chose to retire, which okay. is yeah. that's fine, you know, so uh I brought Johnny along. I know he's not going to like kill me in my sleep. He's a good guy and cool. yeah. <laughs> he's a great bass player. And he's, he's been in the band now since two thirteen. It's almost 10 years. We're, so, uh, I don't know. If you know uh, I don't know if you know, Daryl, but in 2019 and around August, uh, I was stuck for a guitar player and we did uh, Manitoulin Island with uh, glass tiger and Lee Aaron. And uh, we had about 10,000 people. And last yeah. minute I got Mike Hall. I remember that on on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I saw, man, I saw you is, post that. He is amazing. He learned yeah. everything exactly like the record. And Holly and I both said he's probably the best player we've ever had in the band. Yeah, he's a great player, man. No doubt yeah. about it. He's a schooled schooled player too. You know, oh, he geez, went, yeah. you know, he amazing. went to Berkeley. He yeah. went to Berkeley University. He's a great guy. I'll tell you, Daryl, too, you mentioned Ron. Um, we're taking a collection up here in help because he's, he's from this part of the uh, the country. We're taking up a collection to get him a cell phone that doesn't scream at you because every time he posts something, it's in all caps. <laughs> I know. He's been doing that. He's been typing that way since the internet started. Yeah. <laughs> Yelling at you? He's been yeah, doing that. That's funny. And I don't, Barry, I don't know if I told you. I, I think we did your interview well after this, but um, 
when Mary Wilson from the Supreme, it's a great Holly story. Uh, Mary Wilson passed away and she had a very nice post about, um, you know, how big of an influence she was. And so I read the post and I meant to hit the care emoji and I hit the thumbs up emoji by accident. I go and get in the shower and I come out, I get on my phone and there's a messenger from Holly, Sean, I knew that that can't be. And she was finger wagging me. And I was just like, Holly, I'm so sorry. Like I didn't mean to do it. And then she, I knew you weren't that type of guy. My point is, is it was really neat to meet somebody that actually gave a crap about me <laughs> stepping in, you know, dung, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, Holly, I, I can't say anything else, but uh, I'm close to 40 years, and she is probably one of the biggest friends, loves everything I've ever had in my life. And uh, to this day, she's my sister. I've got a killer guest room. It's known as Holly's room. She's here all the time. And probably the greatest Canadian singer in my humble opinion that uh, that ever was and uh, I can't say anything but I love her no she's awesome um, so you know you, you know we've been talking here about it's it's been tough to practice and whatnot and um, we got in a little kind of text conversation we were setting this up about uh, Sabian symbols and I asked the both of you guys if you've had ever been to the plant before and I kind of took that for granted a little bit. It's about five and a half hours away from where I live. I've only been there once in about 30 years. And you guys both said you've never been there. Um, if you guys ever get out this way again, uh, we got to get you there because it's an amazing thing. Yeah. So we talked about that. And Daryl, you're probably right. Uh, Gary McCracken was the first Canadian Sabian endorser. And right? uh, we were really close at that point. And he said, hey, you guys should sign Barry. So Roy Edmonds called me and yeah. um, I ended up dealing with Peter Stairs, who is, um, you know, Roy's counterpart, the VP. And yeah. they treated me like gold. And I'll tell you a very quick story about uh, oh, maybe six or eight years ago, I contacted the new uh, A&R guy. I don't know his name. Stanky? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. And uh, I asked him, could I send my symbols to all get cleaned? Because when Sabian signed me, I was a bit of a pig, and I got 30 symbols. I went and handpicked 30 different symbols, <clears throat> and I asked them if they would clean them, and this new guy, Spanky, said, uh, basically, you know, get lost. We don't know who you are. So I let it go, and I called Peter Stairs uh, last year, and I said, Peter, you know, I'm sitting here playing my new WFL3 drum kit, and it's covered in Sabians, and my green Vistalites are facing me, and they're covered in Sabians, and they're all filthy, and no one will help me. And Peter said, drop everything, send me it all, I'll take care of it. So I got them all back, 30 symbols, completely polished with the new Sabian logo. It, let me just say real quickly, it doesn't matter what symbols you play, Sabian are the best. Yeah, uh, Chris, it's Chris Stank. Sorry, Chris is the guy. Chris Stanky, I think it okay. is. Yeah, so he's uh, a, he's he didn't a, want anything to do with me, but well, Peter the thing Stairs, is, uh, I don't, it, I don't think he, I don't think it's that very. I think like they, you, you must remember, there was a weird changing of the guards kind of thing that happened at Sabian, which is a bit of a bummer. Like, yeah, Roy died. They turned it all around, uh, and like someone else. A couple of people were, I wouldn't, I don't want to say fired. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden they were gone and Peter Stair stayed, but everyone else around him was gone. And then next thing I know, Chris, Chris Stanky is the head guy now in LA. That's what happened. Okay. Yeah. This all happened. And, you know, Peter Stairs took care of me. So, well, that's good. He did. Cause I mean, it's good, it's good to maintain those those contacts regardless of whatever change in exactly, the guard. Exactly, yeah. So so on, on that I'm note, I think that. You, you were third, right? You you were I'm signed right after me by Roy. That I don't know. I just know it was around that time because he was working at a Scarborough and right. it was Rob Rob Reiner and I were signed. Is that right? Okay, so time. Rob uh, Rob played here last month and uh, I brought him and, uh, and Steve and the new bass player over for a barbecue after the sound check and uh yeah it was lots of fun rob and i go back to when we were 15 yeah yeah you know i go back real far with him too and he was in a band called whalebone yeah a, remember that band yeah, yeah from england that's right yeah. it was one of his first bands ever and, and my band sphinx 
when I was in that band, Sphinx, my high school band, uh, we opened up for Whalebone, and that's when I first met Robbie. Robbie, yeah. back, way yeah. back. And he was I, about 18, and I was probably 16 or right, know, something, yeah. something like I, that. I was in a uh, I was in a school there about a month ago, and I walked into the music room, and I took a picture of it, and I'd love to if maybe send it to one of you guys. You can send it to Rob. There was a 28-inch kick drum. And it was an actual, it wasn't one of the ones that you play with the mallet. Somebody had found it somewhere. And the first thing I thought was that that looks like Rob Reiner kick drums right there. And it was Ludwig too. It was very cool. Well, he had a big black Ludwig kit back then. Back he then. sure did. When he was 15, he had the black Ludwigs right next yeah. to him. In yeah, 20, 26 inch kick he had. It, yeah. That went massive to me back then. I was like, holy crap. I think it was a 26 inch that he had. Well, we've, we've obviously talked about this, but I have a letter from Bill Ludwig's father, that uh, they made less than 50 green Vistalite kits in the history of Ludwig, and they yeah. made one that he knew of with matching 26-inch kick drums, and right. they're mine. Yeah, nice. I know. You're, you're the only guy, really, I know that has that, that kit. I, yeah. I've never never seen another drummer with those that green kit. Well, and you guys mentioned that. I'll tell you the one thing that Barry, I, I, I see you practicing on that beautiful green kit. And thank you for the hookup with Bill. We are going to make something happen. What a nice man. I've talked to him a couple times on the phone and the stories are crazy. But you two guys are still, I don't want to say the diehards or whatever, but you're still rocking two kick drums on stage where pretty much everybody else has dropped the two and gone down to one, unless you're using like backline or something from somebody else. But let me uh, say that I only use backline and I only use one kick live. Okay. Double kick pedal. So it's just that much easier, but dunk. What about you? Same thing, man. Yeah. Using one now. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, so it, what, what, what we're dealing with Sean is a backline company that buys the best deal they can yeah. on the best kit they can. And yep. they provide us with what we ask for. And uh, if you demand two kick drums, you're going to get shit or nothing. So what happened with me, I'll be honest, I started using the double pedal when the double pedal became, a, you know, a cool thing when it first started coming out. And and uh, I just got conditioned to the feel of a double pedal yeah. and, and how fast it is and how actually good it is. And but I still love that cockpit feeling of two bass drums in front of me. Right. But, you you kind of sit centered more with with the double kick, and that's why I set my kit up the way I do. Yeah, it's and cool. The, it's a, it's left, a... Kick, left kick drum's a dummy kick, but the left pedal's right in front of the left kick drum. It's just it goes over to the other drum, and the okay. sound men they love you because they don't want to deal with two bass drums. They don't Absolutely. Want to and all that, right? So I still love the feeling of sitting on a double bass kit, but the, I've been playing that double pedal so long now i'm just conditioned to it so. one of the things that i find guys is uh i i was going to get a second kit for my mapex or a second kick for my mapex and it's just the way that i have everything set up now i have my hi-hat so close to my uh my snare i don't even know if i could do it i, I just think it would totally mech, yeah. uh, you know, mess, mess with my feng shui you know what i mean it's a different feel for sure yeah, yeah it's a different different vibe it's bigger that's all everything's spread out a little bit more if i ever right? get worried i mean about that kind of stuff I drink more. <laughs> well, oh boy. what oh is boy. it? The, the more the more you drink, the better we sound. Isn't that the way it goes, Barry? The smoker you drink, the better you feel. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I have to acknowledge something a lot of people don't realize now that you brought up Ludwig. You were talking about Ludwig. Barry actually signed me to Ludwig. I, he, it was all him. He got me my deal with Ludwig. I was with Ludwig for quite a long time. I'm with D drum now, yep. but Barry got me that deal straight on. He said, call up Jenny, blah, blah, blah. I'll call, I'll talk to Bill, blah, blah, blah. And then I ended up talking to Bill and I was with Ludwig for a decade. I, sure. I have three, three wicked kits from them. Big, very, huge, very, very cool. Huge kits. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm, remember, I'm proud and happy that uh, that's the story you tell. Cause it's but a truth. You remember that though. <laughs> you do you know you're the guy that got me the deal? Or you I sure do. Yeah. And here's a funny story to go along with that. We toured with Dawkin. Remember Dawkin? Oh yeah. Rockin like Don Dawkin. Mick Brown, Mick Brown yeah. and I well, Mick became Brown. good friends and Mick Brown used to freak out. Cause I had this, uh six ply maple ludwig kit with two uh 
24 inch kick drums and all the toms and he used to say fuck man do anything please get me an endorsement and at that time bill wasn't endorsing anybody anymore and oh, bill it's a big and, deal and don used to beg me please 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 and i said i can't help you so one night uh bill ludwig and i for whatever reason were in la at the rainbow room and we were right. sitting at a table having a couple of drinks and a burger and Two booths over, I look, and it's it's uh, Mick Brown. And I call, hey, Mick, you've been bugging me for like two years to meet Bill Ludwig. Come on over. Here's Bill Ludwig. That's uh, right. the funniest thing ever. But right. he didn't get an endorsement. No way. Uh -huh. And it's one of the greatest stories ever because a few years ago, uh, Mick is now drumming for Ted Nugent. Yeah. And I hadn't talked to him in 20 years, and I'm, I'm releasing a book. I know you are too, Daryl. I'm releasing a book in uh, April. I'm all done. I have two books out. My I know, out. yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so this is yeah. my first, and I talk about uh, who's been a great guy and who's been an asshole. My book is called <laughs> "Eagles Are for Assholes." Because Good luck with that. Yeah, that's hard. That's a <laughs> tough one. Right, writing books. That's one of the hardest things. Right I know. There. Yeah. So I have a ghostwriter, and she's great. But when I was on tour with Nazareth, Daryl Sweet and I became absolute best friends. You know, Daryl. Obviously, yeah. I we did some too dates with nazareth yeah so he was my best friend in the world for a long time and he yeah, told me two things he said barry i want you to remember two things if you're going to be my friend number one egos are for assholes and that's what i'm naming my book after him and number two the worst fuck i ever had was great <laughs> ah, well, those those but, scottish bastards they were they were, they were a great band what, what a great band they were I do want to bring oh, something yeah. up. Uh, something interesting about what you're talking about here, guys. So, and, and we've had the opportunity over the last while. Well, I mean, I got to know you guys really well. You guys are, you know, uh, we, we text all the time. You guys are funny as crap. You agree to do this. We've had some guys like, you know, Eric Martin and Todd Zuckerman and Liberty DeVito. The biggest pain in the ass that I've dealt with was somebody in my own backyard who I don't even really like that much. Um, and I'm sitting there going, okay, well, here's a guy who thinks he's famous and done something. And I'm meeting guys like you that ha are famous and have done, well, who have is done it? something. We don't know. Uh, I know who it is. I'll keep it to myself for now. But that being said, it was it was the one time where I've been doing this in two years that I almost just said, this is a waste of time. And then he turned it around. But um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is it's it's nice when I meet fellows like you that have some humility to them that are also super talented. Yeah, we're, we're dicks too, right, Barry? Right? <laughs> which, like wait, wait, which one of us is super talented? <laughs> uh, you two right there. Uh, yeah. Here's what no. I'm going to do, boys. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to call this segment where we're going to come back for segment two. And in segment two, I want to get in a nitty gritty. We, we, we've talked on tax all around gear and stuff like that. I know Daryl wants to get back to the hockey game, so we'll do a uh, quick. I'm just looking up as five nothing now. It's five nothing, right on. Leafs are blowing them out. It's great.